Welcome. I'm Alexandre. I've worked at Savoir Faire Linux. It's a good place to be. Awesome team. Now I'm up at 10 scores with a couple of guys here, and we're doing some nice quality score optimization platform. And uh, if you need you add, add words, uh, you should check. So what was the purpose of that talk? You know, we wanted to reinvent Google Analytics. Well, actually, we're not using what I'm going to show yet somehow. But we need insight on user behavior, so that's your case, whatever. <clears throat> okay? So we'll cover very briefly, and uh, <clears throat> actually, I'm probably not going to take 45 minutes because I don't have enough material. We'll see. So we'll see what's JEvent very quickly. JEvent socket IO and <clears throat> how we do integration in Pyramid. We're going to use AngularJS. <clears throat> By the way, raise your hand <clears throat> if you're interested into the JavaScript stuff. Raise your hand if you're not. Okay, because this is web, real-time web, so there's JavaScript involved. Maybe a little bit too much, but uh, so if you're annoyed, scream. If you, if you want to see more, you can also ask, okay? And we're going to have a slight uh, bottle integration. <clears throat> and uh, so the slides are up there live. I mean it. That means go to that URL, and you can find some interesting stuff, okay, happening now if you want. <clears throat> okay. So quick presentation, JEvent, it's a cooperative con concurrency model implemented on top of Python. <clears throat> so you import JEvent, and it creates micro-threads. So that's the basis for JEvent socket IO. It allows it to be very fast at handling multiple threads, so handling a large number of concurrent connections. There's no system context switching because it's all in one process and one system thread. And so these things, you can spawn many, many jobs with spawn. They return a little object that you can rejoin later on. You can kill them, and they're very lightweight. They're called um, greenlets. Okay, so that's, that's the basis for JEvent socket IO. It sits on top. You, you can't run JEvent socket IO without sitting on top of JEvent. And it monkey patches the socket and all sorts of different Python libraries so that it actually taps into the JEvent loop when waiting on IO. Okay? So a little bit of history there. So we, uh, J Jeffrey Gellin started JEvent Socket IO, and we took over at PyCon this year, uh, J John Anderson and, and myself, and we, we revamped it. So uh, if you recall, I wrote and I presented also Py uh, Pyramid Socket IO, which was a little you know, tack on to the original. <clears throat> well, that's dead, and all the good stuff that was in Pyramid Socket IO is now inside JEvent Socket IO and across framework. So it works in Django, Bottle, Flask, name it. It's just you know, standard <coughs> WSGI stuff with some, yeah, hacks in there. But anyway, okay. <coughs> yeah, I want me to respirate. So the, the talk here is going to be a demo, right? I'm not going to show slides that much. We're going to type things, and I'm going to build the app. So I'm going to build Google Analytics. So you, you might see that there's some, a couple of parts that are missing, right? I, I didn't have time to build a full thing. And actually, it's pretty much a... A fake was just to get you guys here. Anyway, <coughs> okay, so <coughs> I'm gonna do that in a virtual lamp. I have the environment installed already, so it doesn't take time. It requires libgevent, libevent, jevent requires that. I'm gonna install the socket I library, and there's a patch sub process so that it hooks into the jevent loop. Okay, we're gonna <laughs> kickstart a pyramid application for starter. Who's happy now? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So, shoot, man. So, where do we start? Why did I write that? Pardon? Why, it's called Cerise. Peak rate starter. The application is going to be called Moo. Oh, okay. So, that's my shortcut for activate. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, I didn't write that little part there. So, Moo. Shoot, man. This is not going to be as fast as it, as it used to be. Now it's set up. <laughs> Just see that. Okay, we're going to serve that app. <clears throat> okay, this gives us a, a simple app. Sorry, I'm going to take that one out here. Okay, so that's the standard pyramid app. And then we're going to tack on to this. Uh, HTML5 boilerplate, okay? So I have, so we're going to take out all the, the nasty uh, original things in there. 
Okay, we're going to take out those files, and we're going to copy from, I have HTML boilerplate here, so uh, GS and MG things, so RV into moo static, okay? So it copies the normalization thing, standard <coughs> main.css, and a couple of scripts. So we'll start with some fresh base. Okay, is that good? Uh, template. I'm going to use Emacs. Yeah. 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 Wow. And uh, this one is going to be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're going to use that fat Emacs. Can you read that? There's a quick thing. We'll replace. Uh, 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 all the JavaScript calls and all the, I know this is boilerplate. Okay, poof. So we should be all set. Now we should have, okay, yes. Uh, we're going to tweak a little bit of the development to add macro uh, directories. Okay, that, and then we're going to go in the views to change the file here. That's going to be index. Oh, and a little last hack. I promise I won't do that for too long. That's going to be, oops, add renderer. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry? <laughs> it was funny. Okay. So should this work? I'm going to it died, factories. Okay, so we have HTML5 boilerplate. I'm going to put uh, for the rest of the, okay, I'm going to put a couple of CSS there so that it's used later on. So I wish I have a simple body and then a wrapper there. NG clock, I'm going to show that a bit later on. And the rest is for the graphs, okay? You don't need to bother with those. They're just set there, okay? Okay, so we're all set. Oh, I forgot a little thing. Okay, so that's going to be our main content here. Div ID wrap. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <coughs> and now we're ready to go. Okay? First thing we're going to do, we're going to integrate AngularJS. Who knows about AngularJS? Okay, AngularJS is an awesome framework. Shoot. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, we're going to copy the, I have a copy of the file here. We're going to put, the, so Angular, we're going to put that in moo static JS vendor, okay? And uh, down here, just after plugins, so vendor, what is it, Angular min, is that it? Is it load? Okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit of how, how it works. It's awesome because we're going to, otherwise you're going to ask questions, what's happening? Angular does most of the job for the rendering here. <coughs> okay, so Angular, uh, yeah, let's load it, okay. And then we're going to mark the app as being handled by Angular. That's where the magic starts. The app is moo. We'll do some handlers for the old beasts. Okay, <laughs> and then on the body tag, we're going to mark this is a controller, okay? That will mean there's going to be a function that deals with the full body and does some rendering and templating and stuff. So we'll go to static, your static uh, main here. As you see, it's, it's empty, right? <coughs> so that's going to be our or JavaScript side of thing, so you, you need to understand a little bit of it. You didn't scream once, so you understand everything, it's interesting, but it, I'm going to change regulator. <laughs> okay, so moo is going to be the, <coughs> sorry, and no dependencies, and then controller, moo, controller function, takes scope, okay? What is scope? So the scope is actually kind of a pipe. Yes, that's a very good idea. So he asked, what is scope? And scope 
is uh, an object, which is like a, just a simple object with the key values. It's attached to the NG controller. So it's kind of wired to the DOM. So the, the, the controller attached to some DOM elements, some data structure, right? So it's just a simple key value thing, which is awesome and great because it's not, it doesn't require all the entourloupette uh, like knockout JS uses, like set so that it detects things that have been changed. This ha is a data binding framework. But I don't want to take too much time for those who are not interested into, <coughs> you know, yeah, okay? So, so that should work somehow. See, we have, we're here, it's bound to the fact that we have the ng app and the, the controller, it runs the code attached to the DOM. And we're going to show a little bit of the data binding. So, so Angular automatically wires everything up. He says, Angular wires things up. Yes, it does. Just yeah, because I loaded it. So, uh, module, blah. Oh, yeah, we're, it's bootstrapped. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> Okay, so, so see we have like inline templates here, and that, since it's inside the ng controller, this is going to call attached to the scope, so you're going to have net, nested scopes and everything. Can you add multiple scopes into one page? Yes, of course, nested scopes in the DOM. So let's say you have that part of the page as a menu, that part is a, I don't know what, you have nested scopes, and you'll see. You did not repeat my question. Here. I am so sorry. Okay, so did you see that? So at first, it loads, and when it's ready to deal with the DOM, it does the replacement. Okay? And that's bound. Yes? Yeah, exactly. Oh, you didn't look. Why don't you look? So I said here scope.who, and that's just a variable in the scope, and it's automatically like interpreted. It does the data binding. And more than that, so if we look at, let's say we have, so input an ng model, and that is who. So if we do that, the actual thing here is going to be automatically mapped in blah, blah. Each time it changes, it changes all the model, and everything is a... Uh, <laughs> it's not me. Shut up. No, we know it's not you. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Angular is developed by Google, uh, guys. Hang on, hang on. Are we doing an Angular or... Uh... So we're not yet into JVent thing. I'm just laying out the grounds because <laughs> JVent thing is going to push things in there, and you're going to see change. Things are going to change, but you won't know why. So I just want to lay the ground here. I'm not going to do the jQuery boilerplate thing, you know, oh, on event change and then insert on the DOM. It's done here. It's just JavaScript. Yeah, I understand. But you're in a web, you know, web framework thing, so. Well, no, no, that's so far. Yeah, okay. Anyway, it's, it's a real-time web, right? So there's unfortunately some JavaScript. It's cool JavaScript for those who like, though. Okay. So, uh, great. And... Um, so that's the two-way data binding. The engine model attached to the input and knows when it changes and writes to the scope and then runs the digest, which is going to go through and reapply whatever has changed. So you can do very complex things with few lines. Uh, it has the, yeah, okay. And you, have, you can have many, many of those. Like they say limit to 2,000 per page. So performance can be good. And you rarely have 2,000 like changing things in your face. Otherwise you can optimize or, you know, or, yeah, things you can do. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so now we're going to wire ng event socket IO. Yes, yes. Actually, it's not going to be so exciting because it's, it's going to be quite short. Yeah, really, I'm at page four, I have 10. Do I <clears throat> Okay. So I'm going to go into development. So we would need to install g event. What was it? So those dependencies here, socket IO. It, it loads gevent uh, uh, websocket that the other guy wrote, and gevent. Okay, those things are all installed already. And uh, we're going to change the server here. What is it? So yeah, a couple of yes. You're talking about socket IO, but socket So yeah, maybe just to be clear, socket IO <coughs> is a. Uh, a wrapper around all the different polling mechanism and push methods that were kind of developed in last year. So, like Facebook, they have you. Many other sites they do. They poll with a XML HTTP request. They wait for 60 seconds. So, if the server has something to say, it's going to put it into the pipe. 
come back and, th and then the client's going to send another request. So that's the polling mechanism. Socket AO abstracts you from those things. It's going to use WebSocket, polling mechanism, HTML file, multi-part uh, polling, and uh, like seven different methods. And it could go through Flash also. <clears throat> so that is abstracts you and gives you some bi-directional communication for your, your web client, which is pretty cool. So there's two things, and they're, up, they're in the process of like splitting things. There's the abstraction of the, the communication layer, and also Socket IO gives you nice semantics like namespaces and event, named events, and JSON encoding. So it gives a little bit more, and they're splitting that in socket IO for the, the, the naming thing, and engine IO. They're working on that right now. The, the Node.js guys that do that. <clears throat> okay, so over here, we can add some. Uh, does that answer the question? You didn't tell me to, so to repeat it, the question. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and the next ver version is always going to try the, the one that we know works, like the JSON P polling. Even on IE 5. Yeah, yeah, you can have way back, no, not 5, you bastard. You funny guy. Yeah. <coughs> uh, I mean, uh, Whatever, it's gonna, it's gonna fall back it falls back through very far, yeah. IE 6 at least. So we can specify the transport. Yes. Which question? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, should. What is transport? So transport will give which ones you want to have the server supported. You want to answer to which one. It's going to send that to the client so he knows which, so which one to use. Sometimes, you, like going through proxies or weird things, you can't have live web sockets going through. So you'll, you know, for a certain application, you'll say, well, start by multi-part or, you know, never use web socket. If, for that one, I just want to take out the flash socket thing because it waits until it finds out that the connection is not, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, who cares about it? Okay, so I mean that's basically it. When that's done, uh, you reload the thing, and you're now, you're now, oh, damn it. you're now backed by a G event. You don't, you don't see a thing. It changes the web server underneath. It monkey patches, and then you're ready to have that high throughput multi connections. Uh, and then it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, you don't know it yet. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Poor you. OK, so are there any questions up to there? What? <laughs> right, we're getting into it. OK, now we're getting into some. So we're, we'll, we're going to integrate the socket IO lib into the client side so that it starts communicate with, communicating with the server side, right? That's the, we lay out the ground. So I understand that might be too long for you, right? We might shorten that part for the next talk. Um, okay, so we'll go in the index. <coughs> I also have, imagine, I also have uh, socket IO here. I can copy directly to my vendors, right? And uh, so socket IO, that should be loaded. And I'm going to, oh, so you might find that annoying. You see that you see the who thing uh, before it loads. We call that flash of, of unstyled con or fook. Flash of unstyled contents. You can add uh, ng cloak. That will hide it. We have a CSS thing that hides things until they're ready to be uh, interpreted by. So it's better. <coughs> okay. Um, so I have socket IO in there. And then I'm going to wire in socket IO here, and I'm go not going to type the full thing. I have a snippet for that. But basically, it's the standard integration. For socket IO inside Angular, it kind of wraps. So, yeah, it's a nice snippet, huh? And uh, <clears throat> so, basically, you have two methods. You can listen to an incoming event with on. We'll do that, and you can send an event, which is going to be a named event, and that just tacks into the Angular loop. When you have something coming in, it's going to re run that binding thing so that it updates all the UI. And same thing on the other side. <clears throat> okay, if you emit stuff, you can have a callback that the server sets. It's going to call back. So you have a, both sides. <clears throat> no, so you have the root scope, which is the top, top. Oh, so he's asking, is the root scope the same as scope? The root scope is the same thing. It's just an object, but it's attached to the ng app, so to the furthermost thing. And you can always know it's going to be there. And you can stay, put some state in there or some data that you can use throughout your, your app. It's an app. Yeah, it's a simple object. <clears throat> it has some methods that start with dollar. 
You're curious about JavaScript, right? You should go to JavaScript Montreal. <coughs> okay. So I, you might have noticed I changed slash stat. That's the namespace. I highly suggest you, you guys use namespace because if you don't put a namespace, it kind of fall back, it falls back on an um, old method of using JVNs like I did for backwards compatibility reason. Just use a namespace there. The documentation will... Thank you. Documentation will some, sometimes... You can just connect. Don't do that with the Python version. And uh, it's, it's, it's better to have a name anyway. Isn't it? It's always better to have a name, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And then we're going to go into init here. We're going to add a route so that we can forward all the traffic. Whoops. Remaining to the, a, a controller piece of code. So what happens is that's pyramid stuff. It's going to look at anything under Socket.io. That's the... You can change that, but it's the resource in Socket.io. In Socket it's going to use those things underneath, like to say WebSocket with a session ID. So anyone sending connections is going to be associated through a virtual socket. You know? So it uses, Socket uses all those stuff underneath Socket.io. OK, yes? So remaining, he's asking what, what remaining matter. Remain. It doesn't mind. The, the thing is just the star. Yeah, I understand. The important thing is just the star. When you have a star, it matches anything afterwards, sets that into a variable called remaining or whatever. It could be some, some other thing, OK? <clears throat> so, yes? You don't add a root for slash stack automatically? Or? So, OK. <laughs> yeah, so he's wondering if we add a root for slash stat. Those are two different things. Here we're talking HTTP requests. The moment we're talking stuck at namespaces, we're removed from the HTTP. We're in another world, and that's bizarre a little bit. It, it goes over HTTP sometimes when it's not using, like WebSocket is just getting posts. But then you have, the, you have named events inside that are packets that hold their own namespaces. That's where stat comes in. So it's not related, and you're not going to get uh, a call, an HTTP call for uh, each packet coming in or going out. It's removed and it's going to be stateful. It's going to it's going to span a long lifetime. It's not just like a request when you have on the web. It stays and runs on the server associated to the the client there, the browser, and stays in memory and can have processes running and doing some job while the browser is waiting. You know, if the browser browser closes, it's going to shut down all the processes that are running on the server. There's always a corresponding, you know, process. Yes. Yes, exactly. Actually, no. The, when you connect, <laughs> he's asking. Wait, okay, okay. He's asking. Each time you go through the the socket I/O, it's going to go through that route. Route. Only when you connect does it go through that and establish a tunnel that's going to exist independently of those things. And you'll see there's a function in By view. Yeah, the rest is just standard. Pyramid or a so bottle or whatever. The socket IO that like automatically binds you the slash socket dot IO. Exactly. URL. You got it. Okay. So the uh, the client in the browser is directly without you and this communication is done inside the browser. It goes through an API that no, so it does, it does through Okay, you'll see that. Well calm down boys. <laughs> you'll see that. Yeah, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show the um, the back and forth thing, you know, the, the values going through, uh, you'll see the protocol. <coughs> it's not fast enough? Okay, where am I? Okay, <coughs> so how we handle that is we have a view config that we're going to bind to that, that route we just set, right? And we're going to get a request. That's pyramid stuff. So it maps to this one here, socket IO. The route is going to go to that piece of code, and then uh, uh, import, man, if we're going to import that socket.io manage command, pass it an environ so that <coughs> we can use that with any framework, it's not dependent on pyramid, and uh, we'll pass it a dictionary, okay, so with the namespace, so we can have one server, different, all sorts of different pages, but that server could handle different namespaces, so it's kind of a <clears throat> Re-implementation of the, the namespacing that we have in, as URLs, but in the socket.io world. Okay. 
So that's, that namespace doesn't exist. We're going to, from Sagrado namespace import base name space. <coughs> Whoa, what's that? Yeah, here, huh? It's just not finished, boy. <coughs> okay. So we're going to create that one. Name space uh, base. Okay. And this one is going to, for example, initialize. This is called, at the moment, uh, Socket.io tries to access or whatever <coughs> that context. Okay, that namespace is going to run that. So we're going to print it. We're going to be so happy if it works. <coughs> and uh, so let's try. We can emit. What are we going to emit? Let's say sign. And that's going to be our first trick. Okay? We're going to send out a, a sign wave through. <coughs> yeah, it's going to be so exciting. Shoot, I thought I didn't have that much time, but. Yeah, not that much. OK, so when we're ready here, oh, just a fun thing. Angular has uh, dependency injection. So if I specify $.socket.io there, it's going to instantiate that piece of thing once for throughout the application. And I can use that in any controller. I'll have that instance there. So that's pretty cool. And you can de de uh, declare all those factories or directives or controllers in all sorts of different files. It's all run at the end and injected when the controller is needed. It's pretty cool. So it's very easy for testing. They're, they well made that for, for a test. You can mock socket IO very easily, and uh, <coughs> that enters up. OK, so we'll do here on sign. And we'll have a function, fun function data. OK, and so sign data. You want to try that? <coughs> OK, I'm not sure. Are you sure? Is that going to work? Oh, I got a sign object. OK, <coughs> so I have that one. <coughs> hey, you're supposed to scream. He's screaming. <coughs> come on, five lines, come on. <coughs> OK. How many, what? Five lines in 15 minutes? Yeah, <coughs> this is good, yeah, OK. Thank you, very nice. Thank you, very nice. <laughs> Yeah. OK. So what we can do, actually go here, and we're going to define the sign value to be like waiting. OK? And from in there, sign equals data value. Right? So we'll have a default value. The moment we have an, an input, we're going write, to write it there. And uh, let's say we have p sign sign, right? Poof. So <clears throat> see, you have waiting, and then you have the value coming in. It updates. So <clears throat> the Angular wrapper does that. OK, great. OK, OK. <clears throat> well, that's, that's this part. OK, we can round of applause now. No? <laughs> I'm just going to show a little bit of the. So there are several commands, just so that you know. I'm not going to write them all. You have on event name that when an args, that's positional arguments. Any event name that's going to be emitted is going to be mapped to on something. And you'll have a couple events like our, like our ECV, like our ECV connect. There's a special packet in Socket.io that's sent when you connect to a namespace or receive disconnect. You can send a disconnect packet. So these are like. Uh, a different level of things. And you can also have, we'll show that a little bit later, mix-ins so that you add tack in functionality to your namespace. We'll do that with the broadcast. Now, if you want to broadcast between all the users in the chat room or whatever, we could add that uh, as a subclass. <coughs> OK? So, <coughs> OK. Now, what we want to do is actually graph the sine wave. So I'm going to send, I'm going to run a little server-side process. That's going to take, for example, the time, running time, and plot sine wave elements, OK? It's going to send it through the server, uh, uh, the client, and the client's going to graph that on the little thing. Would that be good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and we'll see the server-side process running, even though the, customer is not, the client is not sending requests. Huh? Huh? Tack, 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 tack. OK. So first of all, I'm going to go and copy so another vendor thing. And we're going to use D3, which is 
a very cool and nice, and I've, I didn't sleep many nights just because I was doing those things. It was useless for the presentation, but he's going to hope it's nice. <clears throat> and we're going to tack this in, okay, over here, D3, V2, I think that's going to work. Is it going to work? Okay, we have it. <clears throat> and obviously, I'm not going to show any D3 stuff, so I have a little snippet that's just going <clears> to... <throat> throw things. It's going to, yeah, you know. And that snippet is my live graph. Okay, so this is all, this is a little D3 thing. It's going to take data. If it's live updated, there's a little watch here, and it's going to update the graph the moment we push something in the array. Okay? And the way we're going to use that is this way, because Angular adds to, H to the HTML language somehow, <clears throat> and it maps to that code. So, so I'm going to go in there, and we're going to add the sign graph. So my live graph, and the data is going to be the live sign array. And the max delta, because the code supports that, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> that's the window of time it's going to throw, you'll see. And width, 700, that's going to make a great graph, don't you think? Okay, so when I have that, I mean, th things should display. <clears throat> Can I, of course, of course it crashed, because I'm passing this data here. It's not it does not exist on the scope, so we'll add the array on the scope so that it reads something, right? Because right now, obviously, obviously, don't you find that? Okay, I'll go to back here. So live sign equals stuff. And actually, we're going to add the values live sign push. Huh? That'd be great, right? The moment we have the data coming in, we're going to add it, and that's all. You believe me? You believe me? <clears throat> okay, so the graph is there. Now I have an object. So let's put the server side part that's going to push the values. Would that be cool? Okay, cool. So <clears throat> over here, we're going to define a job. It's just my convention. I prepend job because it's a long-running process. And I'm going to span it with a greenlet. <clears throat> okay, so that's going to be uh, send sign. It's always, see? And over here, we're going to span it. So job, job, bang. <clears throat> By doing that, the moment we initialize, it runs that in a separate Threadlet, we would say. And it's still associated with the socket through self. We can emit and go through and, yeah. So you have one job send sign. Per connection, per connection. Per user, exactly. And JVent allows you to have like 100,000 connections on one machine, one server, because it, it, uh, it doesn't do context switching of the system. It does some polling and select things. Yeah, we'll do that. Well, calm down, boy. He, he was asking for broadcast. <clears throat> yeah, he's following at least. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to increment CNT. And actually, we're going to like import a couple of things. Import time here. Whoa, shoot. <laughs> import G event because we're going to need the sleep function to yield the control to the hub. Because there's an event loop going on. And math. Okay. And so this is going to be the current time, and we're going to emit a new value. So we're going to take this one out, okay, because we're going to change the syntax of the event. And that's good. Oh, sorry, we're not. Whatever. That's going to be, uh, so the time, because it's in microseconds, whatever, it just graphs better. And the sign. Okay, what about that? And then... Sleep for a second. What about that? Is that going to work? Makes sense. You see underneath here? Oh, shoot! <laughs> okay, but now it's fun to have a server side process running, but we want to interact with it, right? And tweak it a little bit. So we're going to add a speed controller, right? And the speed controller, shoot, times goes by. Sorry? 
It's just because of the frequency there. We'll improve that. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, it was not interesting. You stop asking questions. I don't have so much time, okay? <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna add a speed controller, okay? <clears throat> and the speed controller is gonna be just here. And select, uh, whoa, speed, select. We're gonna map that to the speed. And, okay, we'll shoot. And the option, and we can have like zero, 05, and we can have like 0.2. 0.5, 1, 2, right? Good values? And obviously, ng model is just going to change the value inside the <coughs> scope. So let's have here scope speed default to 1. And like if we load that, you'll see that we have the speed. We can change it. Some, for now, nothing happens. OK? <coughs> you want to have a little check. So we're going to run a watch. If speed changes, we're going to send the signal to the server to change the speed. Huh. Cool, OK? <clears throat> and that's going to be through socket.io, emit, for example, new speed. And parse float, because it's coming from a, a box, new val. Great. And on the view side, what we're going to do, we're going to pass yeah, on new speed. Speed. So arguments are passed like linearly, uh, just the uh, same thing as Python. <clears throat> and we're going to do something here. We're going to set a default value on the session. Okay. And over here, no, it's going to be equal to speed. Whoops. You with me? Yes. Equals one. <clears throat> Change the speed. Okay. And over here, we'll say. Self session speed. So that's attached server side. It's not the beaker session or Django session. There's a little difficulty with that. <clears throat> we'll explain another time. Okay. Because it stays open, so you don't flush it back the moment the request is done, right? So you have to do some special things to <clears throat> either use it only when you, you want it. Okay, so what? What's these errors? Never mind. <laughs> it's, it's unrelated. Okay, so can we change the speed now? 0.2. Whoa, now we have something better, like 0.5. And now things arrive at a pretty good rate, right, for the server pushing things to the client. That's pretty good. 0.5, so it sleeps a little bit. <clears throat> you have the time running. Okay. <clears throat> okay, okay. So that was the speed. Yes, of course. That's, that's, D3 is awesome because it's SVG. He said, can we change the color? That's SVG. We, we just change a CSS class and this changes color. And those are all native objects in the DOM because it's SVG. It's really great. D3 is awesome. You should have a look at that. And it's the same data binding. You put some data and it pfft, scaffolds some you know, great SVG. Like that because it iterates like automatically and creates objects. It's awesome. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so that's running. Let's calm down a little bit. And then the next thing, next thing we're going to do, we're going to play a game, OK? You guys are good hackers. You know all the tech jokes, right? So I wrote a little application. That you're got, I'll, I'll take out your internet-connected device. So you're going to connect, and you're going to influence what's on a graph, because that's Google Analytics, right? It analyzes real-time traffic. So you're going to create the real-time traffic. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'm going to show you a little program I wrote. It's called Clickable. It's not very useful elsewhere, but OK. So it opens a file. <clears throat> it's a little bottle program. It's unrelated to Socket.io. It's just to collect your, <clears throat> your state of loser or winner. OK, when we receive an event, log event, I'm going to write that as JSON to a file. <clears throat> OK, that's it. And if we look at its, its JavaScript side, so it's going to, you know, if we click on a button, send an event. <clears throat> to see that, you'll go to moo. Yes, you understood. OK, go to that place, <clears throat> moo.abourget.net. And you'll see a couple of questions. That's a kind of a quiz <clears throat> for all your geeky uh, you know, funniness. 
mu.abogel.net. I don't want, you want to take a picture? I never use QR code. They suck, but <clears throat> someone is going to use that. Okay, so I have to run it. Obviously, this is going to connect to my machine here. Okay, so click above. Bang. <clears throat> so now you should, you should be able to connect, and we'll see the request coming in. Okay, that's good. Those questions are going to write things to the log. Next thing we want to do is we actually want <clears throat> to take those lines that are coming down. Yes? No. You're slowing down. Stop the timer. <laughs> <laughs> He's the guy with the timer. That's why I say he wants to see the QR code. <clears throat> Stop the timer. What are you doing? No, you didn't. I know it's hot. I know it's hot. You can blow in your face. <clears throat> yeah, but we're going to see if you're good or bad because we're going to graph the winners and losers and the page views. Okay? <clears throat> so, are you done? Sorry? Uh, somehow. So he's asked, is that anonymous? We don't need to repeat those questions. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to add another little handler that's going to grab that file. It's going to tail it. And the moment there's new data, it's going to push it back to the UI. And the UI is going to graph that. Okay, like Google Analytics does. But better, because that's going to be real time and pretty fast. Google Analytics doesn't do real time. Well, they added that later, but then it's, yeah. You know, okay, anyway, I'm not pretending this is better than Google Analytics, but anyway. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to add another little job. And that job, job, that's going to be grab, click, data. <clears throat> this one is, go we're going to get, I install that. Okay, that's the sub uh, G event support so that it yields control to the, when it's blocking on read line or stuff like that, it's going to yield control back to the loop so it's not blocking, it's never blocking. Because there's only one thread, if you block something with G event, it blocks everything. Yeah, exactly, you're kind of bizwhacked. Okay, so we're going to run p open tail, and I have that in moo, clickable, click clickable.log, and let's start with 100 lines, go through the shell, and the standard out, oh, it's going to go through the pipe, okay? And we're going to read line, because that's how you do, you can't just do read lines. If you do that, it's going to wait until you're dead. Line, okay, we're going to show that, and then just emit, whoops, click, uh, and we're going to load the line, send the object, it's going to be a reserialized on the way out. <clears throat> okay? Is that clear? Thank you. Self spam, we're going to launch that job when the guy gr grab, click data. Is that going to work? Now we should see, well, let me add a handler in the JavaScript, right? If we get scope, no, socket.io on, we get a click, function data, I know, I know. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we're going to console log click data. Okay, want to try that? Go ahead and click on things. We should see things. <sighs> no, it doesn't work. What happens? Serve. Oh, JSON to define. Who, who wrote JSON? Who did that? Okay, it's going to restart. Woot. <clears throat> okay, so it starts. So it sends a, a bunch of clicks. We see them. Arriving, who's that one? Loser, who's that one? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> and now we're going to graph. So I have another D3 thing I'm just going to tack in, <clears throat> and it's going to spread that into bins, the histogram thing. Okay, so main, where is that? That's going to be my bar graph. Okay, it does the same thing, pretty nice stuff. It's not so long. Puts that into bins, draws an SVG, and now... We'll want to have those things here. H4, that's going to be, well, so it's going to be uh, page views. Okay? And that's going to be my bar graph. And this one is going to use data from click data. And the type is going to be page view. Oops. Let's try that one. <coughs> okay, so we have something. Now, what do we miss? <coughs> Take the data, put it into the array. You think it's going to work? Mm-hmm. It's going to work. 
Everything worked, so why don't not? Okay. <clears throat> so on click, we'll have that scope. What is it? Click data, an empty list. Click data, push data there. Oh, phew. Okay, now refresh your browser. You should see those things. So those are bins of 10 seconds. They're going to accumulate. <clears throat> so if you refresh, okay, you have the graph. Those graphs are synchronized through the three, so that's why the, the scale changes. Okay, so you see the page views. An awesome thing we have with Angular, you can reuse your components very easily. So we're going to just copy that. And this one is going to be the losers, winners, and we're going to change a couple of attributes. Type is answer. That's the format of the data coming in. <clears throat> you guys answer a lot of things. Whoa, never had such traffic. So <clears throat> type, whatever. OK, you see it. Answer. You see the winner, OK? And which question they answer. <clears throat> so we're going to do the same things. Type answer, field, winner. Loser. OK, and then we have three graphs, hopefully, with all the losers. Oh, we have a lot of losers. Whoa, that's great. More losers than winners. So, the, so you don't know your tech jokes. Or you're just clicking like crazy, right? Sarah? <clears throat> oh, I have a comment. Your battery. I have two batteries. <laughs> two bat I have a bay battery. That's, I like it. <clears throat> okay, so, sorry? 30 seconds. <clears throat> okay, so I have other things to show, uh, but if you want to answer a question and close it, I know it's late. Yes? Time. Uh, it's actually, I just, I don't know, someone was asked. This is time, it supports the time very well, like you see in the sign thing. But I just split the full thing with the whatever data is coming in. I, I just split equal width, so it's not represented. It doesn't represent time. Like those bars are not correctly aligned to the bar underneath. <clears throat> it's true. That's a failure. But I'm going to improve that for some other times. So, <clears throat> in case you might have noticed, have you guys loaded that page on your machine? So <clears throat> there's a little, you know, this. I also wired in Socket.io into a little bottle app, and those slides push to you guys the moment I change the slide, right? So if you guys open that, you'll see it changes with me. And you guys can't change it because it's tied. That's a social component, yeah. <coughs> Sorry? How do you monetize? <coughs> well, we can see it this way, right? We can see it this way. And uh, I'm the presenter, so I can switch here, psh, 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 and things go out together. <clears throat> and it does that on your machine, too. <clears throat> okay, okay, come on, come on. So that's the slides thing, and it looks like this. There's a broadcast mixin, and the broadcast adds a couple of functions to the object, like broadcast event, not me. And then it's going to send to everyone connected except myself, that event, and then obviously it's easy on the client side, just take that event and switch page. <clears throat> so there's just a couple of lines. That's the bottle example. I'll have that up, up on the web <clears throat> also. It's uh, one file, socket.io server there. You have the namespace, presenter IP. Are there any questions? <clears throat> 